indexing head simulator. This is video one of three. Video one is basically an introduction to the simulator and shows how it works. Video number two is on setting up and doing the math calculations for divisions. If you needed to make a gear or you needed 25 equally spaced holes, that's the video you want to see. Video number three is on arcs and angles. So if you wanted to cut an arc and it was set at a certain angle, that is the video to watch to show you how to do the math calculations and to also do the examples on the simulator. So what exactly is an indexing head simulator or a dividing head simulator? Well, basically, it is the exact same thing as a dividing head, except for instead of cutting a machined part, what you're gonna do is lay it out on paper using the drum instead of the chuck. So why make a simulator and not just use an actual indexing head? Well, to have a nice clean indexing head to have in the classroom, that's about $1,500, $1,600, and weighs 50 to about 100 pounds. This weighs about five pounds. And with this design, it has the built-in spool to record arcs and divisions. Okay, let's get started right now. Well, what do we have here? We have our fictional part that we're gonna cut. Okay, so we're gonna talk first of all about divisions or gear. So let's say, we'll say divisions. So this has 15 divisions. It could be teeth, it could be drilled holes, whatever. So that's how many teeth are actually being cut into the gear. Okay, so as we rotate this around, if you look, there's 15 actual in cuts. Now, let's talk about the cam or the arcs. Okay, so from our zero, which is gonna be represented by this line to the center of this arc here, we'll say is three degrees. So from zero to the start of my arc would be three degrees, so there'd be a calculation for that. Then from the start of the first arc to the end of the first arc would be another calculation. We'll say that's 25 degrees from zero. Then we would turn around and say from here to here, so the end of the first arc to the beginning of the second arc would be, let's say, 18 degrees, or sorry, uh, 95 degrees. Then from the second, the beginning of the second arc to the end of the second arc would be another 35 degrees, and then on to the third one. So for this particular test, what we're going to do is we're going to have one set of divisions and three different arcs that we have to locate, which has from zero to the beginning of an arc to the end of the arc to the beginning of the second arc to the end of the second arc to the beginning of the third arc and to the end of the third arc. You have to do all of those calculations. So what exactly is an indexing head simulator? It's basically the exact same as an indexing head or a dividing head, but instead of actually cutting, it just simulates the cutting action. So in this case, we're using a 40 to one gear ratio. And instead of cutting a workpiece, we are actually marking on a piece of paper from this barrel. Okay, we set it down. The first one here is the gear, and the second one is the arc. Okay, here is the educational part, or the marking part. So what you would do is you would be given a set of divisions, which would be like a gear or drilled holes, and you'd also be giving uh, arc patterns. So if you were making cam, you would use this for making a cam. So on this piece of paper here, you'd cut this, then you would mount that onto the drum here. And I'm gonna show you how to do that in a second. Then you go through and you do your math for each one of these sections. This is the arc section. So from zero to the beginning of the arc, you have to show me your calculation to get to that position. Then here is from the start of the first arc to the end of the first arc. You'd show me your calculation to get to that position, and then so on and so on and so on until you've done your three arcs. Here is your divisions, okay? So you put your name, number, and the number of divisions that you're doing, which will be assigned to you. Then you'd show me the math that it takes to get to your divisions. On this piece of paper here, we're gonna cut it on the line. We'll just take it and cut it on the line nice and neat. 
if it's out a little bit, it's not the end of the world. But keep in mind, your name and all of your information's on there. When you hand them in, you have to hand both of these guys in. So then, let's take a look here. We have our little machine here. So we rotate this machine back to the beginning. It's just extremely light, like this weighs nothing. Okay, so we have this line here and we're gonna start at zero. So how do I get this to fit onto here? Take a piece of tape and you put it across to here. Take this guy here and you line it up with the zero and that line there. Wrap it around the barrel and it should meet pretty much perfectly. Then you take your other piece of tape, make sure it goes up against, and you put it down like that. Then, when you do your arc, the back one is your arc, the front one here is your gear. And that is basically how this guy works. So, once we have the drum all marked up, what do we actually do with it? Well, you give it back to the instructor, and what he'll do is he will put an answer key on top of it. The answer key will look something like this. Basically, it's a mylar or an overhead that has circles and slashes in it, or circles and grooves in it. And then if your mark sheet matches up with this mark sheet, everything is good. I'm a little bit partial to quarter 20 screws for some reason. Almost everything in here is a quarter 20 screw. So I've decided that it would be easier if it was a right hand crank instead of a left handed crank, so this is how I switch it over. This is our pencil holder. Our marking station. These feet are just clamps. The total weight of this unit is probably about five pounds. So it needs to be mounted to a board with rubber feet so it doesn't slide all over the place. And it's also nice and light to be able to transport between shop and classroom. This side, this side here will come right off. Turn around, do the same thing to this side and this whole side will drop out, but I won't be pulling anything off of here. This whole unit is modular and I built the outside box and then made all of the components fit inside so they can be put left to right and back and forth. Now if we take a look, I numbered all the gears. This is a 40 to 1 tooth as well. For some reason during the video, I keep saying gears instead of teeth, to my ever-loving shame. So with this guy on here and this guy exposed still, the gear turns nice and smooth, but I am missing one. I needed to shorten this down, it was sticking out a little too much. Also wanted to remove these guys here. I am going to glue these in. This is a hard spacer here for this side to stop this from moving up and down. So a little bit of glue on here and I'm going to slide her back in. This is the side of the crank so I decided to glue physical spacers in to stop bolts from slipping in case people had a heavy hand with the turning of the crank. Okay and then basically put this bearing support back in. It's a real bearing. This basically completes the assembly or reassembly of the indexing head simulator. So if we take a look, each one of these gears is numbered. There's 40 numbers, so one through 40 on the actual large gear ring. This is a 40 to 1 gear ratio. So for this guy to go one full revolution, 
I have to turn this handle 40 times. Now you know why there's feet on here because this guy likes to move around a lot. Now the most important part, the barrel arm. Because without the barrel arm, everything is for naught. So you want to close the barrel arm down. All of the parts have built-in adjustment so you can tweak the machine to have very accurate layout of gears. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. This video is an introduction to the simulator to show how to load the paper and explain how it works. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. And also, if you want help with building your own simulator, let me know, I can help you out. If you'd like to see other great videos, check out my YouTube channel, Shop and Math. And as always, please like and subscribe. It's free and it'll help me out. All you have to do is click on the icon on my face and I'll do the rest. Thanks for watching the video. Have a great night.